This video is a brief introduction to the soon to be released configuration panel which is a little box uh, with one knob and a display and the panel is so light that you can actually hold it up by the by the connector and it's um, going to be fabricated into a box similar to this or probably the same box but fabricated professionally and it basically does the same as a um, uh, Tilnet connector but with a lot more features to, for controlling the uh, setup parameters as well as some operational features of the GVG panel um, so when you're normally using it um, it will actually show you the cross points as you select in the top row is the program bus and the bottom row is the preview bus and then if you say do a dissolve um, here you'll see that it'll uh, as soon as the dissolve finishes it switches over as the as the cross points do so it follows that so that's in just in normal operation when you're not using it to configure anything um, it shows you um, shows you your statuses there that will also be enhanced at some stage so I'm just going to change hands here now um, it's got a knob on here and what the knob does is as you turn turn the knob it goes through the various menu items um, uh, and as you turn forward it'll go forward I've allocated 40 uh, items which I haven't filled all in yet I've got 10 that's for the moment um, and as you turn backwards it'll, it'll come backwards in menu selection so the first menu selection um, is setting up GPIs. These may move around as I find things that are more important to be up the front, but for the moment this is the way they are. And if you turn the knob all the way to the left, it just takes you back to normal operation, normal operational mode again where I can switch the cross points. And I'll just quickly cover some of the uh, items here. And as I say, most of these items are available on the Telnet connection, and some of them are even available using the shift button in conjunction with the pattern selects when you're in that mode. Color 1 2 mode is, is mainly just used for adjusting the um, color background 1s and 2s, um, but it's also in that mode there. If you use the shift button in conjunction with any of the pattern select buttons, you'll get a set up item. But we're not going to talk about that for the moment. We're just going to go back over to here for the moment and back to the panel. So if we turn to the first item, uh, it says GPI settings um, press to adjust so there's a button on here so if you just push the button down it will then take you into the setup item and as you turn the knob in this particular mode it'll go through the um, different GPIs you see GPI 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 and each one of them tells you what particular function that GPI will perform so the, the built-in GPI without any uh, optional cards is GPI zero, and you can see that's set to 67. If the camera, if the phone's going to focus for me, um, and then if you want want to change that value or any value, you just push the button again. So let's just say we want to change GPI number four. Uh, we just again we just push the button down, and then it enters into GPI four mode, and as I turn the knob, it'll just incremental decrement the GPI function number as required once once we've um, happy with that we can then just hit the uh, push the button down again and it's now set so if we hit the button again you'll actually see that that um, GPI number four is now set to that value and anytime you're making any adjustments on here once you hit enter the telnet connector will actually show you um, that you've, you've done the selection and it'll just print out the current display but that's assuming you've got the telnet hooked up. If you don't have it hooked up, you don't see that. Um, so we'll just go to the next um, function here, is tally functions. Now this is a, a more of a simpler uh, setup. You just press enter and you can just switch it between normal and enhanced. That's using the, um, the normal is just using the tally numbers one to 10 on the, on the extension cable, expansion cable. But if you've got the option for the enhance where you get um, t um, red and green tallies or program and preview tallies, um, it'll switch over and use them. Um, 
So I've just hit enter to enter whatever I just selected. I can't remember. Let's have a look. Oh, we'll just put it back to normal. Okay, uh, function three is ME select. This is where you can just quickly just hit enter, select between ME1 or ME2. Um, and in, in doing so, uh, all, of, all the panel controls will then switch over to um, the selection that you've made. So we'll just keep it on ME1 for the moment. Um, next one is um, switch mode. This is when you're using the program and preview rows um, for either switching program and preview or switching all program and then using the shift button to give you all previews. Uh, this particular one, uh, if I hit enter, is selected to program preview, which is the normal mode. But if you turn the knob, it'll be all program, meaning that um, using control will get you all previews. So we'll just switch that back to normal. Um, next mode is uh, multi-view mode. This is where you can use the multi-viewer to display um, either program preview or the sources as discussed in a previous video. So I can just press enter and you can go program preview or source name, source input names. So we just might switch that to source input names. And um, next one is um, auto reconnect. This is a special function if you lose if you unplug the ATEM, uh, you can either have the have the microcontrol auto connect the uh, back to the ATM or leave it disconnected until you actually hit a, a preview button key and then it'll attempt a reconnection. And there's reasons for that, but we won't go into that for the moment. Um, so that's basically uh, will reconnect or um, a key to reconnect, as just discussed. Um, next item. Oh, did I miss one? Uh, no, there you go, item 7. Um, this is where you can actually map the um, uh, the 20 buttons, meaning um, the 10 shift, the 10 normal or 10 shift gives you 20 inputs. <clears throat> and each one of those buttons, you can allocate an input uh, from whatever's available on the ATM. In this case, I'm using a, a, a it's got 16 inputs, 16 external inputs. So you can allocate any of those, including any of the built-in inputs as well. And a little bit of focus might might help. Yeah, okay, I can kind of read that. Um, I don't know why this thing won't focus properly, but anyhow. So, um, so if we hit enter, uh, it gives us um, the ability to be able to select which input. You can see up to 20 inputs. So we can go back to, say, input number one. And as you're scrolling back, each input tells you what's what it's got allocated. So input number one. It's got black. If I turn the knob to the next input, you can see it's got allocated VTR2. So let's just go and find, say, something up here. These are all the different inputs and their current um, allocations. So let's say we go to, um, say, that input there is number input number 14. So and if I hit enter now, I can then go and change input 14. Little arrows come up here indicating where we're about to adjust input 14 as we adjust the input. It um, tells us the name that's been entered on the ATM switcher itself, and and it also will switch the uh, preview bus um, accordingly to whatever input's already been allocated on there, uh, and it switches the preview monitor as well. So it's got all the, all the blacks on them. But um, so as you as you make your selection, you can just confirm by looking at the um, the preview bus or the, the preview monitor on the on the multi view. So then once, you, once you've found an input that you want for that particular button, you can just then press enter. And again, it will then show you on the Telnet connector if you've got it connected, the new allocations as you've just set. And then they're also saved so that um, you can then just recall them immediately. Um, so uh, the next menu item is the same as the last one, but this is just for doing the key bus because you can have a totally different allocation for the 20 inputs on the key bus, same way as the uh, the program preview rows. And um, just also remember that the program and preview uh, allocations that you set up are also used when you're doing uh, setting up uh, keys and um, you know like his DVE inputs. They all use the program preview uh, allocations as as selected. Um, the next one is the uh, aux buses. Again, the aux buses you can set totally different inputs, and um, using the aux bus selector either on the panel over here 
um, you go ox buses are, um, are just uh, one to one to um, six for a two me is six ox buses and then you can you can change the uh, whatever's on the ox bus using here but also when you've got ox bus selected here the key bus then becomes the ox bus selector uh, I don't think I've covered that in a previous video, but if I do that, if I come up to here and we preview the, uh, I've got to find my mouse, there's my mouse there, there's ox bus, and there's the allocation, so if I actually hit the key bus, you can see it's changing here, here I'm changing the key bus, um, here, and change them down, and they're all selecting whatever's been allocated, and then as you can see here, it's, it's switching, the, switching them down here, so you can actually use that as a a live switcher to your ox buses as well and, and just by changing it to the ox number two you then start switching um, the ox two um, so all those inputs for those 20 inputs for that for that ox bus doesn't affect the key bus but when you're in ox mode then this will allocate the um, the cross points and again you just hit uh, if I can get for enter so if I hit enter um, I can then go through and it'll show you what um, what has been selected for each one of those 20 buttons and remember the buttons 11 to 20 are shift buttons so that's how you can you can set them and of course you can um, just press the button and then change that input to whatever you want and uh, once you hit enter it's, it's set and then again the telnet will show you the ox oh, I can't even hold it steady that shows you the ox bus allocations um, now these same ox bus uh, selections are also used in when you've got two me when you've got a super, super source it uses the allocations from the ox bus as well so um, that's basically the operation for the or the configuration if we go back to normal mode um, and that's it's switching here normal mode now it also has another feature if you actually go over to deck control which we'll go over here now by selecting that that's now deck control this automatically turns into um, the deck control display so that if we hit play you'll see that it's now showing that it's playing and, um, and just shows you the whole hours, minutes, seconds and frames as different to the um, um, if, if you're just um, using the normal, the normal display um, I'll just go over to here so um, with with this, the top row shows you um, queues, and um, each deck, as, as you know, there's two decks, um, it can have five queues and five stills. And the way this works is, if you turn the knob, it shows you queue one, then it shows you still one, it shows you queue two, and then still two, and queue three, still three. So it goes all the way up to still five. So that shows you ten, and basically using this panel. You can use both the queues and the stills for for queue points. So here we are. Um, we're playing, and we we show that Q1 is selected. If I just hit the button, this is a hyperdeck incident. So if I hit the button, it instantaneously queues. Oh, I've hit stop. Oh, I know why. It's um, it's it hasn't got that time code number in there. But um, yeah. So if you just hit uh, any one of the um, any one of the um, there you go. They found that one. Um, so I'm on still one, so it's gone in Q2, whatever the time code that was in still one. If I go to say Q2, and I hit the button here, it will then Q2 that. So you can quickly just pick whatever one you want and hit the button and it'll Q to it. So I can just very quickly do that and if it'll show you up here somewhere. Uh, select the input, is that it there? So if I just say Q, pick a Q point, then it just Q to that, I'll go back one Q point. I'll go back one Q point there. I'll show you over here, and um, that's just just queuing to each individual queue point, which is just rather random. Um, so that's basically if you're um, if you're in playback mode, you can just tell it to queue to any point. You're just using the remote panel. So you might have an assistant so doing doing that. You also have still have the, the same ability of doing them all up in here. Um, now the other trick is that if you uh, put the deck into record, which I'll just do here now. Um, shift and hold. Now that the deck's in record, um, uh, it's not record. Now it's in record. Hit stop. Let's hit stop. And 
Okay. And so now you see that the actual um, box says, the, the um, configuration panel says it's in record. And now you can still turn your um, the knob and select cues or still um, points or registers. And then if you just hit the button, you can actually store into those registers. And that's only when the, when the um, machine, when the deck's in record. So you can just switch through your... Um, whatever registers you want to use, so if you want to use say Q, Q5 say, you can then be using that for, you know, for storing uh, Q points and then of course once you um, come out of record, which we'll just do now, I can then um, so once I uh, do that I can then select that Q point and uh, Q register and then I'm in, because I'm in playback now I can just Hit the um, hit the button and it goes into um, queue point and queues up to that particular register. So as this um, as this configuration panel expands with um, more and more controls, um, th they'll all be um, listed. There'll be a document, uh, a user's guide on how to use it. Um, and it's also going to be the f the basic fundamental for controlling the DVE on the one ME and two ME because there's so many controls and such it's just really hard to map all that into this panel so uh, in, in people who are using it now might notice that you don't have any DVE control uh, from the from the panel but it will be extended uh, taking in all these other parameters um, using, taking in a, the graphic capabilities of the um, this control it was something you probably didn't notice there's a little next to here there's a little one that indicates that you currently got deck one selected up here. If I actually push that button there, it selects deck two, and you see now that says two. So it just lets you know that this this particular configuration panel is controlling deck two. And if I switch it with my other hand, you see it goes back to one. So it's just me switching between the two decks. And there you are. I've done a 17-minute video.